What's up my friend, Abby here and welcome back to Ask Abby where I answer your writing questions and help you to make your story matter. First off, how are you doing? Comment below right now and tell me. I wanna make sure that everybody's doing well and wonderful. And also tell me, give me an update on your writing. So I don't know if you're in the Start Your Story Challenge Facebook group, which is a, a story writing challenge that me and my sister started a few weeks ago or a month ago now, I think. Wow, time flies. If you haven't joined, the link is in the description box below. You can still join. And um, it's been so cool to see everybody's writing updates in that group. I, I'm among them. I've been posting my own updates on my book, which is coming along. It's, um, it's definitely a different process, a different approach I'm taking with this book. I'm writing it more slow paced and just letting it come to me when I feel like it and writing when I feel like it. So it's not really like, it's not anything that I'm pressuring myself to write, which is making it kind of an interesting experience to write because I'm used to writing with self-imposed deadlines and um, telling myself like, you know, you have to write every single day. So I don't work on this every single day, but I do try, I try to work on it every day and um, it's, it's coming along nicely. I'm enjoying it. I don't have a ton of it yet, but I'm really enjoying the process of writing. And I think that's an important part. Um, you have to enjoy it. It has to be something you love and not something that you're just pressuring yourself to get done. So that's my writing update. Tell me yours, comment below and tell me what you're working on right now and um, how it's going. And yeah, let's get to the questions because I have some awesome questions here and I'm very excited to answer them. Why does your story matter? Good question. What if I told you that there's a science behind every great story? I don't just teach you how to write. I teach you how to change the world with your story and make your author dreams come true. In case you're new around here and you don't know how this works, here's the deal. You post your writing questions in the Writer's Life Wednesday Inner Circle Facebook group and hashtag it Ask Abby. And every other week I show up here on YouTube to answer those questions. As many as I can, I usually pick three to four questions each time. I answer them here in a video. That's how it works. To get inside this secret Facebook group and ask a question, plus get a bunch of awesome exclusive content, go to patreon.com slash Abby Emmons. Okay, first question is from Dawn. Hello everyone, I'm new here, thanks for the ad. I'm an aspiring author working on world building and plotting slash outlining my first novel. So I'm here to ask Abby about my three act story structure. I'd really like to use multiple point of views to tell different parts of the story slash to see the world in different ways through the eyes of the characters that all have their own backstory plot and character arc, much like Game of Thrones. I've been struggling with working out the three act story structure while working my different point of views into my timeline. Have you ever written in more than one point of view? If so, can you offer any advice? Does each character that has a point of view chapter get their own three act story structure or is the three act story structure supposed to be for the story itself and each character slash chapter is a point in the story structure? I hope that makes sense. Stay inspired. Yes, that makes sense. So there are a few different things that you can do here. Um, it really depends on how long the series is going to be and what you foresee for the series. Unless it's not even a series. I know you mentioned that it was like Game of Thrones, but you said you said it was a novel. So if it's more than one book, that's like a whole other thing, but you can apply the three-act story structure to a series if you so desire. I'd recommend it for a trilogy, so a three-book series. I'm working on a template for that, and if you're in the Patreon group, you can actually find that in the resource hub of printables and templates. You'll find the story structure, three-act story structure built for a series, for a three-book series. But if it's just a one-shot, I definitely recommend the three act story structure. It's kind of a tricky answer to this question because yes to both. <laughs> yes, you just have one overarching story structure for the whole story. The structure is really for the story itself. However, with each plot point, you can approach it from every character's perspective with different things happening to them, if that makes sense. So let's say the hook. You have the hook, you introduce all the characters that you're gonna be following in this story and you're introducing their internal conflict, okay? So they're each, they each have their own internal conflict, their own backstory. I wouldn't recommend going super deep into the backstory except for what matters to the present moment. So how did their misbelief 
where did their misbelief come from in their backstory, that's relevant, that's important. And then going to say the inciting incident. The inciting incident could be different for each character, but it still occurs in the inciting incident part of the book. Does that make sense? So like, let's say it's 15% into the book. I usually like to do like 10%. Let's say it's 10% into the book, um, the inciting incident happens to all the characters. It could be a different inciting incident for each character. Or let's say it's an inciting incident for one character and then it has an effect on the other character as well. I know this sounds kind of vague without an example, but it really depends on your story. I've written more books with multiple point of views than I have with just one point of view. I find that it's my favorite writing style is to follow multiple characters and first person <laughs> to go into their head and see exactly how they're seeing everything. It makes it more complex and more dynamic, but it also can make it too complex sometimes. So be careful of making it too complex, especially since this is your first novel. Try to really focus in on your central theme the central idea that you want to write into this story. Like what is the most important one? Starting from that small but very important place is really what's going to give your story the strength that it needs to support all the complexities, all the different characters, all the different plots going on. If you try to spin too many plates right from the outset, it can end up just overwhelming you and also making the story feel bogged down with too many things going on. So find that central idea and try to focus in on that. And I'm not saying don't make it complex, absolutely make it complex. And I'm not like one of these people who's like, oh, it's your first novel, so you should write something really simple. Absolutely not. Dream big and do exactly what you want to do. Write the story you want to write, but always center back to what matters, what really matters to you about this story. And for some books, when I write multiple point of views, I do outline them with a different three act story structure for each character. Not like a full blown detailed one, more like a bullet point outline. And I talked about that briefly in my video about uh, writing dual point of views, which would probably help you out. So check that out if you haven't seen it already. Um, but I do like a bullet point outline of the three act story structure listing what happens at each story beat for each character. And sometimes it's the same event happening, but both characters are perceiving it differently. They're being impacted by it differently and engaging with it differently. Sometimes the story beat is completely different. So one character's off somewhere, somewhere doing something and then the other character's somewhere else doing something else. They both have their disaster moments or whatever, whatever the case may be. Let's say it's a disaster. The disasters can be completely different happening on polar opposite sides of the world even <laughs> to these two characters but it still follows the three X story structure and the overarching story, you know what I mean? So I hope that helps to answer your question. Definitely feel free to play around with the three act story structure and try different methods and just don't overwhelm yourself too much with how complex you want to make it. Okay, next question is from Mac. Hey everyone, I'm currently facing a problem with writing my first novel. I've been trying to figure out how to show the readers that another character is lying without the protagonist no shown as stupid and oblivious. I am writing in first person and now I'm wondering if I should have another point of view for the antagonist to show her side of the story, unless there is a way to let the readers know without the protagonist knowing. It'd be really helpful, thanks. That's a good question, and that's something that I wrote into my Nano 2018 novel. I think that was like the first time I'd written a book where the antagonist had a point of view and I fell in love with it. <laughs> the number of point of views is really a preference. It's the writer's preference and the reader's preference. I totally know what you mean about you don't want your main character to come across as oblivious and stupid. And I've seen that in stories before and it always just like frustrates me, not even like in a good way of like, oh, you wanna scream at the characters. Like, yeah, every story should trust should frustrate you to the point of wanting to scream at the characters if it's well written. Um, but that's like, it's like beyond the line of believability. It's like, how can they not see that this person is a villain? <laughs> However, the question becomes this. Is the revelation that the antagonist, that this character is lying, is the lie, the revelation of the lie, is that going to be the disaster plot point or is that going to be 
a plot twist. I say that because you might want to handle it differently based on what point in your story you're going to reveal this lie. You're going to reveal that the antagonist is the antagonist. If it's the disaster plot point, then yes, you're going to want to reveal through vicarious suspense is what I personally recommend and love. And you can watch my pinch point video to uh, get a better handle on what that is. But vicarious suspense essentially is the reader knowing more than the character and knowing that there is something something bad's gonna happen and we're clued in on it, but the character really does not know much of anything yet. And vicarious suspense is awesome for leading up to that disaster plot point. However, if you want it to be a total surprise to the reader, then that's another story. So there's several ways to go about this. It's not like a one size fits all or right or wrong or anything. If you want it to be a total surprise, that the antagonist is who she is and that she's been lying this whole time, then maybe you want that to be the plot twist, the game-changing midpoint, in which case you might want to just surprise the reader with this sudden revelation. But that would show up halfway through the story so your character wouldn't have to be like oblivious for very long. This is in the case of if you don't want to have multiple point of views because I know that some stories aren't conducive for it or the writer just doesn't want to do multiple point of views and there are ways to work around it. And another tool that you can use is getting really intentional with descriptions, especially of body language. How can you show the reader and the character in subtle ways that this character, this other character, this antagonist is lying. Dialogue and description can do a lot. It can say a lot about a character and what a character is hiding without them having to come right out and say it, okay? It's like the subtext that I was talking about in my recent video on dialogue. And if your protagonist notices some of these cues, some of this body language or this fumbling around through the lie or trying to hide something and they can just sense that something is off about this other character, that really helps to make the protagonist not be oblivious or stupid at all about what's happening. They're aware, but they're not really sure what exactly is happening. So there are a few different ways to go about this. There's no like one size fits all you have to do it this way. You could do it through vicarious suspense in her point of view show or another character's point of view who knows her. It doesn't even have to be her point of view. It could be another character who just is more closely acquainted with her or simply use clues in body language and dialogue and description that the protagonist notices but doesn't read super into. But I personally love it when antagonists have a point of view, so I 10 10 recommend that. <laughs> okay, last question is from Becca. How do you know if your story is going to be a standalone or a series? I have my whole book outlined with two possible outcomes. A, tie up all the loose ends and have everyone live happily ever after, or B, there's a shift as my MC's internal conflict is being resolved and another important character's is just beginning. This would mean that this person makes a wrong decision at the end of the book that greatly affects the MC and leaves the reader wanting to know what happens next. I have a gut feeling that both of these characters' stories are not over, but that would mean trusting myself to write another book. I'm so confident with my story and I fear a second book may not live up to the first. Do I tie up the loose ends in the first book or do I take a chance and leave a cliffhanger that makes the reader want to pick up the second? Mm, that's a good question. So it's funny because I actually had this exact same thing happen to me when I wrote that 2018 NaNoWriMo novel. It was originally going to be a duology. Um, some of you were probably around for my vlogs back then and you may have remembered that I was gonna have two books, a sequel, they were gonna like go together and the second book was gonna take this whole crazy turn of events. But as I was writing the first book, I realized I'm not gonna be able to write a second book. <laughs> it wasn't so much that the characters didn't have more in them, like they probably do, but I just didn't enjoy writing the genre as much as I thought I was going to write it. It was kind of like a futuristic, crossover genre and that's just very outside my usual of contemporary <laughs> YA contemporary romance. It was like the exact opposite. So it was very different and was fun, but I couldn't see myself writing a second book. So I ended up having to rework the ending and just finish it off and have it be a standalone. That's just me. Every writer is different, but 
I would recommend asking yourself above anything else, don't even think about like the readers in the future or who will buy it or any of that. Don't even think about whether it will be good enough. Just think, do I really love writing this story? Do I really love writing this genre? Do I love the tone of this story? Do I love the characters? And if you're really loving it, then maybe yes, you will have another book in you and it will turn out great because you love it. However, if you're in the middle of writing it, I think you said you were outlining it. I don't know if you're writing it currently or if you're just outlining it, but if you're just outlining it, I wouldn't make this decision until you start writing some of it, which it goes against a lot of what I say in the past about like outlining your whole book and make sure, making sure it's all perfect before you start writing. In the case of a duology or um, two books or a sequel, it's sometimes better to leave the ending fuzzy in your outline and not commit yourself to two books. Because if you end up committing yourself to two books and then you don't want to write the second one, it can really dampen your energy for the first book or for the standalone and you don't want that. <laughs> so my suggestion would be to kind of leave it up in the air for now as you go into the writing process and see how you actually like writing it. And then if you're like, wow, this is great, I really love it, then keep doing it. Try not to worry too much about the second book not being as good as the first. I know every writer has this fear. So if you do write the second book, try to go into it with the perspective of this is its own thing. This is its own story. And even though it's a continuation of the first book, it's a creation of its own. So try not to compare too much. I know it's hard, but be kind to yourself and enjoy the writing process and really listen to your gut and your feeling and your desires on this project. Because either way, it will be awesome. Either way you go sounds amazing. Okay guys, those are some awesome questions. Thank you so much. And if you would like your question answered here on YouTube, head on over to patreon.com slash Abby Emmons. Get yourself inside the Facebook group. Spoiler alert, it is an awesome group, awesome squad of writers just like you and me. We all hang out and talk about stories together. And I also do live streams. It's just like an ongoing writing party. It's great. <laughs> Smash that like button if you liked this video and be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already because I post writing videos and publishing videos every single Wednesday and I would love to have you here in the community. Until next week, my friend, rock on. Abby here and welcome back to Ask Abby. <laughs> What's up, my friend? <laughs> blah, 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 blah. I've been struggling with working on the three act I've been struggling with working on the three act. I've been struggling through. I've been struggling to read this piece of paper since I started. <laughs>